he needs no further introduction. Tony Ben. <laughs> First, can I thank you for coming? Never underestimate the impact that these demonstrations have because they're reported all over the world. And when women and children are killed as they are now, it becomes a moral question. And all of us are responsible for trying to stop it. And I want to make a few suggestions as to what might be done. First of all, we have a naval base in Cyprus and Royal Navy warships should now go to escort all the ships coming to Gaza with humanitarian supplies. And the RAF should be used to fly into Gaza. Not only doctors and medical supplies and food, but also journalists who have been kept out of Gaza by the Israeli government. We should ask the Israeli ambassador to leave London yes. and we call our ambassador from Israel. We should uh, recognize the Palestinian state. There should be a free Palestine and the British government should come out and make that clear. We should negotiate with Hamas now. We should say to the Israelis, say to the Israelis that we will not allow any Israeli aeroplanes to land at any British airports. And that would be a way of making it clear. And we should also ask the BBC to do a proper job in reporting these demonstrations. I worked once for the BBC and I tell you now it is a disgrace. It has a, it has a rule. It never reports what is said at meetings. If there's a BBC camera here, all they'll be looking for is a scuffle or a fight or an arrest. They never report what is said and they lie about the number of people attending our demonstrations. So never, never underestimate the importance of these meetings. I've spoken in Trafalgar Square beginning at the time of the Suez War and we were denounced, of course, as we always are, and a few weeks later the Prime Minister was sacked and the war ended. And we've had demonstrations here about South Africa, about Vietnam, and I tell you Trafalgar Square is the politics of tomorrow. If you want to know the future, come to Trafalgar Square and make it clear today what we want and why we intend to continue until we succeed, as we certainly shall. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much, Tony. As you say, today we are demanding truth from the press truth from the media about what is happening in Gaza. We're here today to expose the truth of the deaths and atrocities being inflicted upon the innocent women and children, upon the civilians of Gaza. And we want it reported in the press, honestly, about the war crimes which are taking place in Gaza. Now I'm very pleased to introduce as our next speaker someone who for many years has spoken the truth in our press, in the media, as both a writer and a campaigning journalist, she speaks out for the truth for the people. Please welcome Victoria Britton. Thank you very much, Kate. Welcome, everybody. Friends, and above all, sisters. I want to start by saying 3,400 babies have been born in Gaza since the 27th of December. Those births, which should have been joy, have been in circumstances so horrible that for any outsider it's almost impossible to take it in. The nightmare of blood and death and wounded, mutilated children is what all of us have been able to see if 
we have bothered to see since the last three weeks began. We've seen bombs, artillery, sniper fire, tanks, white phosphorus bombs which burn for hours, fall on homes, on schools, on mosques, on hospitals. The Israelis' innocent victims are there inside these homes and hospitals and schools and UN buildings. All of you know that more than a thousand people have been killed and that more than 300 children have been killed. Nowhere in Gaza is safe now. Imagine what that's like for a parent. There's nowhere your child can be safe. And for these new mothers, 3,400 of them, can you imagine the terror and the sorrow in which they are with their new babies? Many people in this square have friends and relations in Gaza. And I know your hearts and your thoughts and your telephone calls are with them all the time. We are all in solidarity with you. Young people have been asking me so often in these last few weeks, is this the blackest time for Palestinians? Is Gaza a new black time? I ask them, since 1948, there have been black times after black times. And I want to remind you just of two. 1982, Sabra and Shatila, at least 17,000 Palestinians were massacred in the camps in Beirut. And I want to remind you also of Tal el Zata camp, which in 1976 was under siege for seven months, and nobody knows how many Palestinians were killed. The world forgot those times. This time, the world must not forget, must not forget Gaza. We're not going to allow it to just bleed into normal television coverage. I also want to just remind you that Gaza has been essentially under siege for the last two and a half years and that the Israelis have normalized assassinations, arrests of MPs, the squeezing of the economic life of Gaza. Now for the first time the world has seen Israeli war crimes as they are and I want to give a big thank you to all the Palestinian journalists on Al Jazeera and others who are showing us this. Thank you. We can now see that the narrative of Israel as the victim is completely ridiculed on the screen every day. And that's why countries like Venezuela, Bolivia, Mauritania and Qatar have cut all ties with Israel. And I want to echo what Tony Benn said. We too. Many of us will reiterate that call. And I'm sure that everybody here will take up the call that Palestinian civil society, which is what leads us now, made two years ago for boycott, divestment and sanctions. Enough is enough. Thank you.